Hello. Uh, I want to use this video as an opportunity to show how uh, simple lists work in Python. Now, uh, a list is uh, very similar to an array. You may have heard of the word array. Um, and it's a kind of countable data structure. So if we go all the way up to sort of A level and beyond computer science, um, there are different, not only are the different types of variable, but there are then these sort of data structures which allow you to keep data in more advanced ways and a list is one of those and the, the reason a list is a good thing to actually start with is because first of all they're very versatile and useful and Python uses them a great deal actually um, kind of just in the way it works um, but also as well as them being useful powerful and common they're not too difficult to understand because actually a list is just a countable collection of stuff like a list is if you're writing a list so in this video i'm going to try and end up with a simple shopping list app or computer program written in python using the thony editor but before i do that i'm going to actually just type some commands into the shell underneath so i'm just going to kind of run some python code one line at a time um, to show you some of the things you can do with these lists so first of all i'm going to make a list and it's the same way i would make a variable of any sort really I give it a name, a meaningful identifier. There, there are rules like it can't have any spaces. Um, it can't uh, be a reserved word like one of the commands like print. You couldn't call it print because there is a command called print. Um, no spaces. So people sometimes use underscores. It's quite Pythonistic to put underscores. If you want shopping list, perhaps as a, a two word variable name, you could put shopping underscore list. Um, but but basically you just create an identifier and it should also describe what it's storing so this is going to be a list of my shopping so calling it shopping makes sense okay now a list uh, instead of just giving it some data uh what i'm going to do is create a list with the square brackets okay and inside those square brackets i'm going to put multiple pieces of data all of the items for my shopping list uh because i'm going to actually shop for food um, i'm going to use words or strings and so they need to be in quotes so the first item uh, i'm going to put on my shopping list is bread but i want more than one thing so i'm going to use a comma to separate items in my list and then i'll have some milk because that's a pretty common thing to go shopping for and we'll just do one more thing uh, we'll put some eggs on my shopping list as well so what i've done is i've created a new data structure uh, or a new variable called shopping use the equal sign to assign it a value to give it some data to store and then i've used the square brackets and commas to list three things okay and if i press enter that is now in the computer's memory okay if i type in the command print shopping it will print that list back at me okay and you can see there that python tends to use single quotes i'm in the habit of writing double quotes when i put words or string data into python um, it works with both uh, if you're learning from scratch, you might prefer to use these single quotes. Um, now, other things you can do. You can print just one item from this list. Okay, If you use square brackets when uh, getting data back like this, what do you predict that will do? If I print shopping one, it will just print one item from my shopping list. And you might imagine it to be bread because that's the first item in my shopping list. But actually, it prints milk. Okay, and that's because in Python and in many other programming languages, uh, the list indexes or starts at zero. Okay, so the index numbers, like what number item you have in your list, starts at zero and counts up. Some things in the real world do that. So uh, if you're choosing a floor to go to in a lift in a building, the ground floor is like the zero floor, isn't it? The first floor is up the stairs. Um, and ages, I think, are similar in that you are one year old after you've already been alive for a year. So your first year of life is like your zeroth year. Maybe that's confusing. But the point is, if you'd like to look at your first item, you have to put shopping and then zero in square brackets and it will give you that bread. Uh, and so similarly, just to complete the job, if I put two, it gives me what is the index number two. So zero, one, two, that should be my eggs. And it is. And incidentally, if you did put a three because you were counting to your third item, because the index number uh, three actually means the fourth item, it's just going to give an error. And it's not a cryptic error. OK, the first two lines of code may not uh, of error might not mean much. But the third one says index error. 
Okay, the list index is out of range. The index number three is looking for a fourth item. There are only three items in this list. There was an index out of range error. It was outside 0, 1, 2, the, the three indexes it knows about. Okay, um, it's a common error. So if you see list index out of range, that usually means you're trying to look for something in a list that isn't there or you're trying to count beyond something. Uh, other things you can do then, so we can use the len command, and just to be a bit confusing, what len does is it finds the length of the list. So it doesn't worry about index numbers, it literally counts how long is this list, how many items are in it. So len shopping does give me the number three because there were three items on my shopping list. Uh, I can append things. So if I type out the list name shopping and then put append, which means like add to the end, right? Put on the end, there's an appendix in a book and it's the bit on the end often. Um, I'm feeling like a sweet treat. So I'm gonna put some ice cream in my shopping list. Okay, and now if I print the shopping list completely, all items, you can see I've got bread, milk, eggs, and ice cream. And if I were to do that len command again, hopefully you can see that's gone up to four because there are now four items on the list. Okay. Uh, maybe two other commands I'll show you before we start making a, an app for ourselves. We can do sorting and reversing. Okay, so if I do shopping.sort, okay, now this is a command. It's like a, a method I want the computer to do, but it doesn't need any information. So you don't need to put anything in the brackets like you did with uh, len or append. But if I press enter and then print my shopping list again, you should see it in order. Now, because it was words, it worked out to do that in alphabetical order. If it was numbers, it would sort them into numerical order. So I've got bread, eggs, ice cream, milk now. Uh, and if I do shopping.reverse, and then print shopping, milk, ice cream, eggs, bread. By the way, you might have seen I managed to type print shopping without typing it. If you press the up and down arrows on the uh, keyboard, you can actually cycle through all the things you've been typing in, which is quite interesting. So actually, if I want to you know, look at some of the previous commands, I can just do that. Anyway, enough of that. Let's use the first thing I did here as the basis for a shopping list program. So there we go, shopping list program, shopping equals bread, milk, eggs. Uh, and I'll clear that out. Okay, we'll uh, kind of forget all of the stuff we've done in here so far. Okay. Um, now, we've given people three things. Maybe, maybe we don't want to give people three things. Maybe we'll just create a blank list. If you want to make an empty list, you can just put the square brackets. You don't need to put any commas or any data inside it. Um, and then we'll use shopping.append to add something. So um, we'll print, what would you like to add? And then uh, new underscore item can be collected from the keyboard using the input command. Um, and actually, here's a little tip. You can put like um, a bit of information, a bit of writing in here. So you could put, what would you like? What I sometimes do is just put like an arrow and a space in quotes in the input command. And you'll see what that does in the shell when we run this. And then we can say shopping.append. And instead of, because I don't know what the user's typed in yet, I'll just use that reference to a variable. Okay, so when they type something in, what they type in, what their response to this input command is, will be stored in this variable called new item. And then I can append that variable or whatever's in that variable to my shopping list. And then I'll print it. Print shopping. Okay, this is the basis of a program. I'm going to run that. Okay, what would you like to add? Eggs. And now I have a list with one thing. Okay, it's not a very good app yet, right? Because I can have a list of one thing and then it stops. So uh, what we need to do next is make it a loop. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is put this in a loop and say, uh, we'll say, okay, uh, more equals yes. And then I'm gonna say, while more is y for yes, do all this stuff. So I'm gonna make a bit more space on my screen by dragging the shell to the bottom. I'm gonna indent all of this bit so it happens over and over again. 
Okay, so now save and run. And down at the bottom it says what we'd like to add. So our eggs, add some milk, add some bread. And here you can see I've got eggs, milk, and bread in my list. Ice cream was another thing, butter. This is never going to stop, okay? Because more equals yes, and it says while more is yes, do these things. And it's just going to do it forever. So let's stop. What I actually need to do then after we've added an item maybe is say, uh, print, would you like to add more? And what I'm going to do is put yes slash no with a y slash n, and then put... Uh, more equals input. And hopefully they'll just type Y or N. I mean, as long as they type Y, it'll go round again. If they type anything other than Y, and actually anything other than a lowercase Y, it'll stop. That's fine. I don't care. If they don't type it right, that's their problem. But you could do some validation on that. And uh... Right, what would you like to add? X, milk. Oh, hang on. <laughs> would you like to add more? Yes. Aha, now I can put the milk in. And I've got eggs and milk. Would you like to add more? No. And it stops. Okay, this is good. This this works well. This repeats. Um, I think one thing I might do, and at the risk of being a bit overly complicated, instead of just printing shopping like this, I'm going to print it in a different way. I'm actually going to print each item individually. I'm going to go four items or item in shopping. Now this is a weird, it's not weird, but this is a, a, a kind of loop syntax or structure quite unique to Python, but it's quite nice. If you've got one of these lists with lots of things in, you can use a for loop to loop through every item in the list um, using the in operator. So by saying for and then a variable name, I've used item, in the list shopping, it will loop through every item. And if there were three things in there, it will loop three times. If there are a hundred things on this list, it will loop a hundred times. So it, it kind of, when it gets to that, running that code, it looks at how many items there are and just keeps looping until it runs out of items. Very, very clever. Uh, and so if I just put print item, what it does, it says for every item I find in the shopping list, store the current item I'm looking at in a variable, I call it item, and then print it. So if I save it, maybe this will make more sense. So uh, run. Okay, what would you like to add? Eggs. So you can see here, we've when it prints, it just prints the word eggs without all these square brackets and quotes, which is a bit more user friendly. Uh, we'll add some bread. And now you can see it's got eggs and bread on top of each other and without the sort of um, quotes and square brackets, which are you know unique to how the computer's doing it. Uh, if I go yes, we can add ice cream here. And you can see it's got eggs, bread, and ice cream. And the list is building, 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 building. Um, uh, we had butter, didn't we? Uh, oh, would you like to add more? I've written butter, which is not yes or no, and so it stopped. Yeah. Hopefully you can kind of recreate this for yourself, maybe extend it slightly, maybe even get it to print your shopping list in alphabetical order for you, and maybe do something nice when the loop finishes as well, like say, here's your finished shopping list. Thanks for using the program. I uh, hope that was interesting. I hope it helped, uh, and I'll see you in another one of these videos sometime soon.